Bart VFX. His style is so popular right now and unlike Houston Cold, his style is more straightforward and easier to make. In this video, we are going to reveal the secret for one of his latest reels. This video is easy and everyone can follow, but before we get to the video, it would be really nice of you to hit that like and subscribe if you have not subscribed yet. Also watching this video until the end will be a huge help for me. Thank you so much, now let's continue. Alright, so here we are, inside photo we have the effects and we have this reel, let's watch it first. Control the input, but output is beyond our reach. Control the input, but output is beyond our reach. Control so as you see the reel is very simple, we have a shape layer that scales and then we have a camera rotation to the second scene and of course at the end we have a match cut that will finish the scene. So let's just start with designing this first scene. So what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to use the background that I have downloaded and this is the background, however I'm just going to rotate it for 90 degree. So this seems good for me. And now what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to lock the background and then let's just uh, show the reference. So about here and then I'm just going to go towards the rectangle tool. Let's change its color to a pure white, let's say. And then I'm just going to draw a rectangle like this and let's just call it a square. And then I'm just going to go towards the roundness and I'm going to round the shape a bit like this. Now, if I uh, hide the rectangle, as you see, we have some dark shades around the rectangle. So how are we going to make that? It's pretty simple. Now we can achieve this technique with two ways. In the first way, you can do that with the CC vignette effect. However, uh, I'm just going to use the second method, which is with the help of the layer styles and the inner glow. So I'm just going to add the inner glow and in settings, I'm just going to go increase the size. And I'm going to set its color to black. However, I just need to change the blend mode from screen to normal. So we will have something like this. Now we can just use the few parameter to design it however we want. Okay. So this is close to what we have in the original reel. Now on the second step, what we have is the text animation. So as you see, we have the input text. So what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to rebuild the text one more time. And I'm just going to write the word the input. So this is the, the input bound. And let's just change its font to bbus. And I'm going to use the... Let's just use the Bebus Pro Bolt. This is good for me. I'm going to extend the size and I'm going to change its color to something like this. Now, if we reveal the animation, you will see that we have the animation letter by letter and by animated by position so that is also easy to make so what I'm going to do is that I'm just gonna focus on this text and what I'm going to do is that I'm just gonna go towards the text menu in animate I'm just gonna add a position now I will set the position value to something like 30 for the y-axis and then in range selector I'm just gonna start animated from let's say 0 to here so we will have that position movement that we had on the reel in here so we'll see that we have the position now as you see it is letter by letter uh, and as you see it is letter by letter in here as well but however we have a problem so we need to hide the text when it's revealing so that is also easy to make so what i'm going to do is that i'm just gonna select the animator one not the animate this is important and in add menu i'm just gonna add a opacity property and i'm gonna set the pro mm -hmm. opacity on zero so this will be exactly like the animation okay this is great now let's reveal the animation so you see that we have a scaling animation like this so let's just do that as well so i'm just gonna go towards the animate menu square so I'm just going to select the square and let's also parent the input 
pretty square so it follows the main movement and I'm just gonna rotate it for let's say like 45 degree 45 I think it's too much like 30 should be fine and then I'm just gonna press S to reveal the scale and I'm gonna turn off the chain option and I'm gonna just do something like this okay so let's just set a keyframe in here on here let's just set it on 100% Let's also set the keyframe on rotation. Let's press U to, re to rebuild the keyframes. And let's also set this on zero. Oh, we need to do a reverse. I'm sorry. So in keyframe assistance, I'm just going to reverse Draw the it. input. But okay, this seems good. However, the movement is too linear. So what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to set the easings on 60% control the input but okay this is nice now also we need to work on the background text that we have in here so this is also easy to make so i'm just gonna write the word the input and let's just um, find another type of text that fits better okay and let's just increase it let's turn off the fill let's turn on the stroke this is going to be something like this and I'm going to duplicate it, this one and I'm going to place it in here. Now it is time to turn these uh, layers into 3D so we can add the camera. However, as soon as I do that, you will see that the text will turn green because then we have set the render machine on the advanced 3D. So let's just set it on classic 3D so everything got back to its normal design. Okay, that is good. Now let's also Select this uh, third text and as you have witnessed it in the rail, it was something like this. So let me show it one more time. You will see that the bottom one is a bit, uh, you know, rotated. So I'm just going to do that as well. Something to here. And then what we need to do is that we need to push these two texts beneath the original circle. And this will be something like this, right? And now we need to work on the camera animation. So let's just see the camera animation for the first scene. So as soon as we have a zoom in and then we have a scene transition. So what I'm going to do is that I'm just gonna start with a camera. The type is set on two node, which is fine. The preset is set on 50 millimeter. That is also fine. And I'm gonna uh, create a node. This node will be the zoom node. So I'm just gonna rename it to zoom and I'm just going to set it on 3D and then I'm just going to parent it to the node and I'm going to press P to reveal the position and then I'm just going to set a keyframe and about here I'm just going to slowly zoom nodes draw the input but out so when it's in here so let's just turn off the audio as, at this point so when it's in here I'm just going to add the second movement. So I'm just going to duplicate and I'm going to call it the, you know, slide. So this basically slides the scene to the, uh, from the right to left. So I'm just going to call it slide. And I'm going to parent this zoom node to the slide so we can have access to the uh, zoom as well. So I'm just going to delete these keyframes. Now in here, I'm just going to set a keyframe on position and then I'm just going to rotate this one to left right something like this i'm gonna set it on 60 percent as well so let's watch okay this is good now in this type of reels paying attention to the details is the key so if i reveal the reference one more time you will see you will see that we have a sort of a rotation on the cart that we have in here so what i'm going to do is that i'm just gonna animate a rotation as well so i'm just going to press r so as you see if i uh, animate the y this will give us the result that we want so i'm just gonna quickly animate this rotation for let's say like mm, like 20 percent seems fine so as you see this is now fine this is nice and this seems good for me now, as soon as we do that, we need to reveal the second scene. So if I open the reel one more time, you'll see that we have the same card appearing in here. 
with the red uh, red box and the output text on it. And so let's just now duplicate the square. Let's push it above in here. Let's also change this color to red and I'm going to call it the red square. And now let's just bring it in here. We will have it in here. And now let's just fix its position. We don't need anything. So I'm just not going to change anything about the Z rotation. So let's just um, push the Z rotation to here. No, this is not the Z rotation that we want. We need to work on the scale. This is the really important part for me. So as you see, when it's in here, I'm just going to change the Y rotation. Let's just press R. So it should be something like this, but needs to be a little bit smaller. Right now it's just too big. So let's just position it. As, let's just position it on here as well. And let's also change this color to a reddish color. Right? So when it's going, we will have this animation like this. However, it's a bit too late, so let's just push it in here. As you see, the second scene was super easy to make. Now we can just add the text. So it is the same thing that we have done in the beginning of the video. I'm just going to refuse to do it to make this tutorial a bit faster. Great. Now, when we, uh, now if we open the reel one more time, you will see that in here we have a sort of a blurry uh, shape and then we have a sort of a match cut what we call it so we have another scene so this is where it's it's for the best that we finish this scene and we start with a new composition so what i'm going to do is that i'm just going to show you how the blur is done so now it is easy let's just add an adjustment layer and i'm just gonna add a Fastbox blur and let's just blur it like this. So you'll see that we have this blurriness like this. So when we have this blurriness, it is best to close this scene. So what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to duplicate this uh, comp and I'm going to call it scene two. And I'm going to open it. Let's just delete everything except the example D square. And let's just also set this color to mm, mm, red. So let's just, it's for the best if we keep this one. So we have this square. Let's just uh, open the transform and reset its transform. So we have it on the middle. Now we need to sort of reposition it in the position that it was before. So it was almost, let's uh, pick up its coordinates. The rotation was on 35. Mm, 34 degree so I'm just gonna set its rotation to 34 degree like this and it was a bit blurry so let's just set it on here we don't need it anymore and now it is easy let's just reveal the reference one more time and we are just going to reposition these circles it's easy so I'm just gonna duplicate this circle and I'm just gonna select it I'm just gonna push it in here I'm just gonna use the scale to scale it down and basically I'm just going to use the rotation and the scale sort of just fit them into this design now we are not just going to copycat it but I'm just going to show you how it's done so you just need to place some random circles in the composition it's up to you So here are the basic uh, squares that we have and this is just simple. Let's just for now delete the keyframes on them, don't need them anymore.
All right, and when it's in here, what we need to do is that we need to add a new camera again. And then I'm just gonna create a node that represents the zoom. Let's just call it zoom. And let's just also set it on 3D. And basically what you need to do is that you need to just use the node to zoom out either or zoom in. That's up to you. So the movement will be the same. So now at the end, what you can do is that you can just create a new scene and then you can add these two composition in a row and you can finish the design. And here we are at the end of this video and I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave out a like and subscribe to the channel as it would help me out a lot for the future content. Thank you so much. Goodbye.